All right, hel hello everybody and uh, welcome and thank you for, for joining me today. Um, so I just want to introduce myself very quickly. My name is uh, Vincent Greenier and I have been an EFL ESL teacher and teacher trainer for about 17 years. Um, I started most of my time has been in South Korea, but I've also taught in Thailand briefly, uh, New Zealand and, and now the UK. Um, so in that time, uh, one of my biggest passions has been curriculum and materials design. Um, I've had the opportunity to help develop the middle school course books uh, for, for the EFL classes in South Korea. And I've um, helped introduce a lot of innovative curriculums, project based learning curriculums, <coughs> um, excuse me, and inquiry based um, curriculum. So uh, I've had lots of opportunities with um, with uh, adapting materials and creating new materials. And that's what I want to share with you today is how how to um, First, I guess, why do we need materials? How are they useful? And then in this course, I would also teach you how you can create your own materials and how you can adapt uh, textbooks and things like that. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So I think I'll go ahead and, and get started. And like I said, the first thing we need to do is talk about what are materials and what is a curriculum. Um, and we're going to talk mostly about materials today. And I, I have here uh, the definitions and the basic principles. Uh, for for materials development and materials design. I have definitions as plural because I think there are many definitions of what, what constitutes a curriculum and materials in DSAL. And also because if you were in my class, I would also ask you to give your definition. What, what do you think um, materials and, and a curriculum is uh, in, in language teaching and um, you know, how can we define it? And so we would brainstorm ideas about you know, what are the most important aspects and what, what would need to be included in a definition. Um, but since it's uh, not the classroom, and I'm just I'm just going to go on and and talk to you about um, what material the most important elements of materials design and development in TESOL. Again, today's today's lecture I'm going to focus on materials. So when we when we produce materials or when we select materials or when we adapt materials, um, there are sort of five key things that we want these uh, materials to do. Whether it's a course book or it's some other type of material, uh, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. But whatever we select, whatever we use uh, for our classroom material, we want to touch on, we want to make sure it, it includes or it, it, it attends to these five important factors, these five important features. First, that it's informative, um, that it gives information about the language and it, it teaches about the language. Um, in, in, most cases, in my case, English, right? um, and not only that it's informative in that way, but it, uh, as far as teaching the language, but also that it um, provides a guide and um, a step, a set of procedures for how the language is going to be learned. Um, textbooks, textbooks sort of inherently do that; they're designed that way. Um, but when we use our own authentic materials, when we create our own materials, we got to make sure that we we're going to teach the learners how to use them as well. So they need to be informative in the, you know, the procedural, you know, the procedures that we're going to use, but also it means informative in that it informs people about the language. Uh, the second one is instructional. Of course, they need to instruct. Any materials uh, that we create needs to be able to teach people about the language. Um, now, this doesn't need that mean that they need to be like question, you know, um, com all have uh, only comprehension questions or true false questions or fill in the blank questions. There are many different ways that materials can instruct um, the language, but we want to make sure that there is key uh, um, instructional objectives in, in the lesson. The next one is experiential. We want to give the um, learners and a chance to experience the language. Now, in a way, it's strange to use experiential because experiential learning it kind of means not uh, using the textbook and not not uh, adhering only to a textbook. But in this case, when we're talking about experiential um, 
uh, as a key factor in materials design and development, it means we want to give learners the opportunity to use the language, whether that's through role play or maybe it's listening to two native speakers having a conversation and then kind of reenacting that conversation or talking, uh, discussing what happened in the conversation. So anyway, we want to give learners the opportunity to experience the language. The next one is eliciting. Eliciting just means uh, participation. We want to get our, our learners to participate. Um, we want learners to provide information. Ideally, we want learners not only answering our questions, you know, um, it's probably not a very good class if it's just like if the teacher asks a question and the students answer. We also want students to um, ask their own questions, right? So we want materials that are going to provoke interest, it gets students engaged, and get students wanting to participate, wanting to ask their own questions, and wanting to respond to what the what the teacher is talking about. And exploratory. Uh, in this case, exploratory means we want learners to take risks with the language. We want materials that promote risk taking and, and make students curious about the language. Well, what does this word mean? Um, and I don't know exactly how to use this grammatical structure, but I'm going to try. So we want materials that will that will get learners um, to take risks with the language, explore new language, and and just try it out. So um, these are the five things that you know that you should start with when you're considering um, how to what materials to choose and how to make your own materials. So let's get on with the definition. Um, what are materials? Uh, materials that Brian Tomlinson, this is a quote by Brian Tomlinson, who was a leader in ESL, uh, EFL materials uh, design. He's written several textbooks about it. Uh, he says materials are anything which is used by teachers and learners to facilitate the learning of a language. Um, they obviously could be videos and DVDs, emails, YouTube, dictionaries, grammar books, readers, workbooks, photocopied exercises, and of course, course books, te textbooks. But they could also be lots of other things. They can be newspapers. They can be food packages. If you're teaching about food, maybe you want to use recipes and food packages uh, to talk about nutrition and, and things like that. Um, they can be um, uh, photographs. It can be, um, you know, it doesn't just have to be written stuff. It can be invited um, talks given by invited speakers or the instructions given by the teacher. Um, task written on cards, Dis discussion between learners uh, can also be considered materials, uh, maps, advertising brochures and advertising mater materials, board games, computer games, TV shows, all of these things uh, can be learning materials. So why do we need materials? What is, what is the purpose of materials? Well, according to another leader in, in TESOL, um, uh, another leader in curriculum and materials design, uh, specifically Scott Thornbury, he says we do not need materials. Um, so I'm interested in hearing, I'd be interested in hearing uh, your thoughts on that. But he says that, um, uh, or he wants to go to a minimalist um, approach to language teaching so that he, he uses the term dog me, to, uh, which is a, a term from a minimal, minimalist movement in film to say that all we need are the teachers and learners. So in the in the film in the film movement, it's the actors are the most important thing in the story, and and you know he thinks that should apply to the language learning classroom as well. He feels that there is an overemphasis on grammar and materials driven material, and such material is an obstacle and it kind of buries what he calls the inner life of the learners. So he thinks that. Um, too often materials are learned or are, are, um, course books and whatever the learning materials are, they are used as the object of learning and the vehicle of learning. So the course book is what is driving the, the lesson. And so that means that teachers are teaching um, to the course book. They are just, you know, going through page by page and they're not really teaching to the learners. Um, they're teaching the they're teaching the course book without really considering the learners, and that's what he says he's observed. Um, so the uh, the teachers 
need to focus on the students, what the students need to know and what the students are de doing and not on the objectives of the course book or the exercises in the course book. So uh, this is often called materials light teaching. So he doesn't completely say you have to get rid of all materials, but he says we should go to uh, we should consider the most important resources in the classroom, which is the teacher and the learner, and that should drive the learning process, not a course book, not a handout, uh, and certainly not a test or something like that. Uh, so why why do we need materials and, and how can they help? How can we use them? Um, I don't necessarily dis I don't necessarily agree that uh, textbooks are bad or that um, they always drive the lesson. Um, you know, there should be a balance of, of um, checking, you know, making sure students get the information that they need, that they have structure uh, to their lesson and they have they know what the content of their lesson is while also ensuring that you are teaching to the learners themselves and that there is good interaction about what students need to know and how students are progressing. Um, so we can use materials in that way. So when we use materials uh, like course books, teachers can better improvise in class once they have established the procedures and routines from the published material. So that means that the published material, the course book or whatever it is, the handout, the the activities, um, like I said, a board game or something like that. Once they've established the rules and the procedures, then they can improvise and they can use the the course book or the materials as a platform, a jumping off point uh, for doing other things in the classroom. Uh, the next bullet point here, materials provide students with a clear guide and structure for the lesson. So students like textbooks because it shows what they have done. Um, it shows what they're going to do, you know, and students can look at a, a, a textbook or the materials and, and say, yeah, I kind of know this, but, you know, maybe this will it'll be good to um, to get this information again, you know, maybe for for the test. <laughs> I hope they don't think that way, but um, but it will also alert them to things. Oh, I don't really know this in the textbook. As they flip through the pages, they'll find things that they need help with, and so that will give them a, also a guide um, to where they really need to pay attention. And again, students like structure, especially younger students. So it's good. Uh, textbooks and course materials are good for younger learners because it provides them a clear, you know, step by step procedure through a lesson and they know what they're going to do and they know what they have done um, you know at the end of the at the end of the class materials can be especially useful also uh, for novice teachers so teachers who do not have a lot of teaching experience uh, new teachers that are just uh, starting out in the classroom they don't know what makes a good lesson they don't know what they should put first they don't know how to organize their lesson uh, they don't maybe they don't know how to create good materials for themselves so the textbook in a way teaches them that you know um, the the a, a course book can actually be um, professional development for a teacher it can teach them what a good lesson looks like and how they can structure their lesson so uh, um, and, you know, they may be stressed anyway, having to go into the classroom and and having to, um, you know, engage with learners because because they're new. So the course book can kind of alleviate uh, some of that uh, extra, you know, stress of having to develop a good a good lesson. So very good uh, for for new teachers. Materials allow for content to be expanded on or minimized or minimized in some cases. So you can, as you're going through a textbook, you can go, oh, I haven't taught this. Or I don't think students are going to know the past perfect uh, verb tense. And so then you can get your own materials. You can say, I've not taught this. Uh, I can see that from maybe a previous lesson, the students didn't really understand it. So this gives me an idea that I need to expand on this or it can be minimized. You know, it's like students already know this, uh, so I don't really need to cover this part of the lesson. Or I can just touch on this briefly, just do one activity, one exercise, and then move on to the next. Um, and lastly, the last bullet point here, materials can act as evidence for progression and continuation in a language learning program. I touched on this earlier, but students can see what they have done, what they have learned. Um, at the end of a class, they, they have sort of a record, you know, they have a, um, a document, the course book or whatever materials they used to show what they've learned and what they've done and how how they've progressed. Um, so it, it allows learners to reflect on on what they have learned in a class. 
So what are the benefits of language learning materials? I think there are five key purposes for materials. Um, the first is that it meets psychological needs for the learners. So again, this is something to consider when you're creating your own materials, when you're choosing textbooks, when you're adapting materials, uh, and especially when you're looking for more authentic materials, you know, beyond the textbook, what to bring into the classroom. So I think uh, there is a need to meet psychological needs. The first being motivation and interest. Uh, what will motivate my students? What will engage them? What are their interests? Um, how can I bring their lives into the language classroom and make them make them want to learn this material? Um, it provides exposure to language. So uh, again, it's good to have a balance between, um, you know, course book material, uh, material produced for the EFL classroom um, that's sort of basic and instructional and authentic material that will give them more natural exposure to the to the language um, in, in how it's used in everyday everyday language everyday use. Um, three, it acts as a vehicle of information for language skills, for learning skills, uh, for strategy. It teaches about culture and of course it gives knowledge. It gives them information about different things um, and um, it will it will uh, you know that that vehicle can then be used that the material as a vehicle for learning can be used in many different ways. Like I said, a jumping off point to really engage students and find out what they're interested in. Number four, it provides a stimulus for classroom activities, both those in the textbook and those that extend from the textbook material. So um, you can just take a textbook activity like an exercise and you can um, turn that into a role play exercise or you can turn that into you know a debate or you can turn that you can use um, a basic you know kind of textbook a typical textbook activity for a range of different um, activities especially communicative activities um, and number five it acts as i said before it can act as a form of teacher education a form of professional development it can give teachers especially novice teachers but also experienced teachers a good idea of how to organize and structure um, their their lesson or it can give them ideas about what kind of materials that they can create or it can give them um, you know a better understanding of this particular learners uh, group of learners needs so if I go into if I'm a teacher um, in a new classroom if I'm going to go into a new class I can look at the textbook and I can kind of see you know what level these students are at and so then if you're a new teacher you can kind of get a sense of you know at least in this school where different learners are at and and how you can teach them and how you can address their needs um, so why do we need why do we need textbooks uh, Jill Johnson in her article who needs another course book she criticized uh, second language learning beginner textbooks especially beginner textbooks but really all textbooks for being all the same in terms of thematic content and their approach to instruction so many of you can probably relate to this I think you know 95 percent of the course books I've ever taught from had a, a unit on uh, food and a unit on travel <laughs> um, and you know these are very typical themes in textbooks and in those themes um, within those themes it's tip it's typically the same language you know like using the future tense to talk about places that you will travel to or you know um, the same uh, vocabulary um, that goes in every textbook so basically there's a lot of sameness to these textbooks and they're there they tend to copy each other so she stated that commercial materials are influenced by factors related to classroom management and classroom dynamics rather than what we know about language acquisition so essentially she says that most textbooks many textbooks are created to keep students busy <laughs> right they are uh, busy work so fill in blanks matching you know um uh, comprehension type questions like multiple choice type questions this is not how we use language and it's not how we learn language either um so and so these activities are formulated around you know educational uh, principles and not necessarily language acquisition principles so that's a huge criticism of textbooks and other um you know mass-produced 
um, um, EFL learning materials is that they're really they're not they don't really apply the principles of language acquisition and language learning. They're just made to keep students busy. So we we should consider that when we're looking when we're looking at textbooks and we're we're choosing what to teach and, and how to formulate our own lessons around a textbook. If we were in the class together at this point, I would ask you to get into groups and we would have a brief discussion discussion about what we have already uh, talked about, what I've already discussed. And so I'd ask you these two questions. Do you agree with this? Do you agree with Jill Johnson that textbooks tend to be the same and they're sort of uh, the objective of them is to keep students busy, to have students doing exercises? Not like this doesn't help them, um, you know, learn language, but it, it doesn't really engage them with uh, in a communicative activity that's going to help them, you know, improve their language skills it will just help it will improve their language knowledge but so anyway do, do you agree with this and the second question i would ask is what has been your experience with foreign language learning textbooks and and other materials what do you think about them what kind of materials have you used so, so i'd ask you to get in groups and discuss this and then after about 10 10 minutes 10 15 minutes depending on how the conversation was going we would continue with the lesson and i would um I would go on next to the benefits of language learning materials. Why? How can learning materials help learners? So basically, I would ask what you thought and I would take your ideas and, and put them up on the board and then share with you uh, what many of the things that have been written about the benefits of language learning materials. And I'm just going to I know I'm short on time at this point, so I'll just go through the list here. They arouse learners interest. Um, they're challenging or they should be challenging enough for learners um, that shouldn't be too easy. Um, make students feel that they have um, they are having a properly planned class. They su they support and guide both students and the teacher and provide structure and progression. And I guess you can read the, the rest of the list. Uh, I heard I heard a bell, so maybe my time is up. <laughs> um, but. Uh, um, but yeah, we would just we would just continue to talk about the benefits of language learning materials. And then I, again, I would probably um, ask you about your thoughts about about these things and what do you think is most important? All right. Thank you for listening. <laughs> we do have a few questions which have popped up. Excellent. That's great. Um, should I? So I will I can actually read them out to you. Uh, yeah, so the that first would be good. one. Mm -hmm is should we be designing materials to meet individual learning needs yes absolutely it's difficult to do i know I, i've taught in large classes and i've taught in classes where students were at many different levels um so i guess that is that comes with experience this is called differentiation lesson differentiation being able to address the needs of students at different um, proficiency levels and in students with different interests and different um you know different motivations uh so you have to get to know uh, as a teacher you have to get to know your learners and know what their needs are and yes you do have to give a uh, different exercises and different materials to high proficiency students um, and more guiding materials and more more help with students at lower proficiency. Again, I know this is difficult. Uh, I, I've been in large classrooms. I've been in classrooms where students were at very different levels um, and it's challenging, um, but you can do it as a teacher. And the more you learn about materials design and, and about di differentiation, the easier this becomes. So I actually in this class, I would teach you there's a whole um, lecture uh, on a lesson differentiation, how to do that, how to create materials for the same class on the same themes uh, for levels at different or for learners at different levels. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, we also have another question. So is how do you know which materials are appropriate to bring into the classroom? Well, uh, there's the, the the slides that I that I presented uh, gave gave a lot of um, ideas about how you should be evaluating your materials. You know, do the materials do these sort of things? Do the materials um, are the materials of motivating and of interest to the students? Um, are the materials 
um, do the do the materials give enough experience? Do they give the, stu the um, students the opportunity to explore the language or are they just sort of like, you know, rhetorical? Are they just asking them to fill in blanks or to do information that they already know? So all the things that I presented on today uh, can can act as a checklist for how you select your materials. Um, was that was that the question? Uh, did I answer the question that you were asking? Um, basically, you just you know use the ideas that that I presented on when you're evaluating uh, materials to choose what is a good and what could what is an effective material. Um, um, if you're talking about how do you select what to what to use and what to skip in a textbook, I think the same principles apply, um, but also you, you have to base it on your learners too. You know, it can't just be textbooks are not a, um, a, a one size fits all sort of thing. You have to decide on your learners needs and you have to know your learners and how to help them best. Um, and, and you should make your decisions primarily based on you know what's going to help your students the most what do your what do your learners need we have a, a comment Other. here um uh -huh. we say um someone saying that they agree and think that we should be introducing more interactive learning materials to engage students in communicative learning um and i also have another question how to create innovative materials how do we create innovative materials OK, good. Um, to, so to the comment, uh, thank you uh, for agreeing and uh, I, I agree back. Um, and there is a whole in this class, there is a whole uh, another whole lecture on authentic materials and how to make authentic materials interactive and exploratory. Um, how basically how to use how to get away from textbooks and how to use newspaper articles and movies and things like that um, in the language classroom and, and how to effectively incorporate them into the, um, the language um, and thematic, um, you know, goals, I guess, goals of the of the unit. Um, and what was the question? How do we? <laughs> Sorry. Question was, how do we create innovative materials? Oh, OK, good. Um, well, the, the most effective way to create innovative materials is to involve your learners in the creation of the materials. Um, so you should your the, the really interactive, really engaging materials are the materials that the students design themselves, uh, that the students are at least um, uh, part of the collaborative team uh, that is making uh, making the materials. So if the unit is about you know, this is this isn't a, a very creative activity, but if the unit is about food, you can have students create their own menu, right? Or, or um, create their own restaurant, and then they are uh, they are using the language and the theme of the unit, um, and you can give them key words that they have to use, key vocabulary, key grammatical structures, things like that. Um, but they should be actually creating the dialogue. Like, let's say it's uh, they're uh, going to dinner at a restaurant. So you have a chef and you have a waiter and you have a couple that's going and they can create a role play and then they cre create a menu. Uh, they can create all these things. So when the teacher lets go, and the teacher um, actively involves the learners in, and engages the learners in the production and the selection of, of the learning materials, then you're going to get really creative and innovative materials. So, yeah, we'll teach with your students, not to your students, is my, my main advice. Great, um, and we have one more question. So okay. that is, how do you approach the situation in a classroom or school environment where the curriculum focuses heavily on specific textbooks, so you don't get much, so you don't get much say in what is used. Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, um, because this is the case in, in many in many countries and in many contexts, especially for high school learners, you know, that are preparing for very high stakes tests. So I understand that this is the reality. Um, you know, I guess the answer is you do the best that you can um, in 
in um, engaging the learners while also ensuring that you're doing what the principal wants so that you don't get in trouble. Um, you know, I know learners need certain, they need to learn certain things, you know. I mean, uh, unfortunately, education has sort of become, um, you know, this industrial process, you know, and you know, there's a lot of uh, box checking. Did you teach this? Did you teach that? And you have to make sure that your students perform well on the, the quizzes and, and ultimately these high stakes tests um, and I've taught like IELTS and TOEFL classes and they you know they're not the most engaging and fun you can still um, innovate with materials but you know you you have to make sure that you are doing what the administrator wants you to do and what the students want you to do and that you're preparing students for for their goals again it's all about you know doing what the learner needs and, and helping the student uh helping the learner reach their goal but yeah it's hard when you are given these very didactic you know uh these very uh hyper structured uh learning materials especially course books and you're told just teach the course book that's not a fun way to teach um but you know sometimes it's necessary so uh when you're in that situation i i think the only advice i can give is that you do the best that you can uh to innovate and engage learners maybe there is one class or maybe there's 20 minutes at the end 15 minutes at the end of class that you can engage them in discussion or conversation or do some kind of role playing um you know try to etch out that time that you can that you can introduce more innovative and more engaging materials but if you got a job to do and you're in your uh you know administrator say you have to do this then you know that, that's tough that's a tough situation you got to do your job so um uh, probably not the the best answer but uh the most honest and you know pragmatic answer but good it's a good question and i've been in those types of situations too so i can empathize That's great. Thank you very much, Vincent. Um, we do not have any more questions at the moment, but if anyone does have any questions, please, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, we can wait a couple of minutes um, to see if anything pops up. Questions? Ask me anything. I'm happy to answer any question. You can ask about the program also if you'd like. Not just about learning materials. Nothing yet? So we have one other question. I was wondering how you get involved in creating a textbook during your time in career. I think it's quite interesting. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I worked at a national university at the time and um, I, uh, I taught in a gifted and talented program. These are for really, uh, this program was for really bright, um, uh, the, the best, the best English students in the city, presumably. I, I was living in the uh, Korea's third largest city, which is called Daegu. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard of it, uh, but uh, I was working there and uh, yeah, so I was working in this gifted and talented program. And so I just kind of the whole the whole idea of this program was about creativity. So I sort of became known for creating innovative and creative uh, materials and we were working with literature it was a literature based program students were reading books and then they were doing all sorts of uh, projects and presentations in the community and this got out to the um to the um, local um, education ministry and they asked me to create some materials uh for them and uh for for a program that they were running a gifted and talented program that they were running and then they recommended me to the the national ministry of education um to to try to make the textbooks a little bit more uh creative and engaging and so i guess um i just knew the right people and i was in the in the right position at the time um and uh luck mostly <laughs> Uh, I didn't apply. I didn't apply. They just they just headhunting headhunted me, and uh, and I said yes. 
So it was a really amazing experience. Thanks, Vincent. That sounds like a, a really great opportunity and um, a time for you to, to gain uh, experience um, working in another country as well. Um, so that's really great. Um, we don't have any more questions, so if, if everyone is finished, um, we can wrap it up there um, and thank everyone for attending our mini lecture. So I'll just hand over to you, um, Vincent, to, to finish off. Yes, thank you everyone for attending. It was it was my pleasure to um, uh, to, to talk <laughs> to you and I hope I get a chance to meet you. I hope that you're interested um, in the program. We have many, many courses. Another course that I teach is on creativity and innovation in language learning and teaching. And we talk about materials and and um, other things about um, making learning more creative uh, for students. And uh, yeah, I hope I hope that this piqued your interest that that um, you you want to learn more. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'd be happy to answer your questions either about materials or about the program or, or anything you want to talk about. So uh, thank you for coming today and uh, I hope I hope I get a chance to meet you um, in the near future. <laughs>